next time, yeah. everybody. Uh, the first Holocaust survivor I met was as an 18-year-old working on a kibbutz in Israel. Her name was Lena, and she spoke as much English as I spoke Yiddish. But we got through it together. She was an amazing woman to work with and work for. Um, and uh, the, the support and friendship she gave me as an 18-year-old, the first time away from home, I will always be grateful for. And for me, it was a lesson in human spirit and human survival. And we are fortunate in this country that we have many Holocaust survivors who are still willing to share their stories. Sadly, this living testimony will not be with us forever. So it is their stories that we, that why, is why that this memorial is important. But critically, this debate is not about whether we should have a memorial. That is something I think we all agree on. Rather, this debate is about whether the right location is Victoria Tower Gardens, and therefore, if this bill is necessary. As we have heard, this bill seeks to amend the 1900 London County Council Act, which preserves the park for the public and repeals the prohibition of building within the park, which would then permit the building of the Holocaust Memorial and Learning Centre. Not just a simple monument, this is a design which requires excavations going down two storeys to fulfil a design which has come under heavy criticism on account of its scale and suitability for this particular area. Naturally, there has, uh, this has caused concern for many of my residents living in the surrounding area. And so as the local MP for the proposed site, I stand to speak in support of the Save Victoria Tower Gardens campaign. The Save Victoria Tower Camp Gardens campaign is a group of local people who care deeply about this area. They have worked with a variety of different groups, such as Historic England, the Thorny Island Society, the Buxton Family, London Historic Parks and Gardens Trust. And most importantly, Holocaust, Surv Holocaust survivors to make sure we get this project right. After consulting these interest groups, they have raised several concerns with the project, which comes back to one major issue, location. Location, as with every development, is key consideration, and Westminster is no different. First, there is a shortage of community parks in the city of Westminster. So the loss of even the smallest open space can have a big impact on a local community. And in central London, that, is, that loss is felt even more keenly. I thought you will. I thank the Honourable Lady uh, for giving way, and I appreciate the concerns of, of the local community about their, own, their amenities here. But with regard to location, in the suggested location, the Holocaust Memorial would offer not just education and not just a reminder to the public, but would she agree with me that it would offer a reminder to those of us in this place for generations to come about the danger of allowing a repeat, a danger of allowing um, racism, anti-Semitism to grow. And that is why the location there, although I accept it's not ideal for everyone, is important. Yeah. I thank the Honourable Lady for her intervention. And I would agree that it's important that we must remember the Holocaust, of all Holocausts, across the 21st century and the 20th century. Sadly, they continue today. But it's about this location, of, and myself as the local MP, and as the former leader of Westminster City Council, who was the leader during the planning process, and believe me, I saw it all from start to finish, I know that the local people have no problem with the memorial. It is about the location. Location is, is as I said, is about, the concern is about the shortage of community parks in the city of Westminster, and the loss will be felt. Mr Deputy Speaker, I think it's very important to outline what an important neighbourhood park Victoria Tower, Tower Gardens is for thousands of local people, not just in, uh, in, in expensive houses and expensive neighbourhoods, but also, let us not forget, yards from this place, yards from Victoria Tower Gardens, there are thousands of people living in housing association and social um, council homes. They do not have the benefit of gardens. 
Every single green space is precious for them. And I have spoken to people living on these estates and they fear losing their local park so that their children cannot play. And I think we must really remember that um, this place that, you know, going for a walk or for lunch or doing a media interview is one thing, but to lose your family park is completely another one. And in fact, the original planning application for the memorial, there was more than a thousand objections, most of which objected on the grounds of loss of green space. And I do remember that time, and they were genuine concerns from local people. The Save the Victoria Tower Gardens campaign also noted the site's important legal functions and a role of protecting the Palace of Westminster World Heritage Site. And this is an important point because we must also remember that Victoria Tower Gardens is, after all, a Grade 2 listed public park. And for this reason, the design of the monument and learning centre matters greatly. So much so that Historic England, the government's advisor on historic environment, has raised significant concerns about overwhelming existing monuments. Indeed, the gardens have notable existing mem memorials to oppression and emancipation. Consider Rodine's The Burgers of Calais, the statue of the suffragette Emmeline Pankhurst, or even, as we've already mentioned today, the Buxton Memorial to the Abolition of Slavery. Now, there is a good argument that their presence makes it an appropriate site for development, and I accept this. However, the proposed Holocaust Memorial design and learning centre is almost triple their size, and the Save Victoria Tower Gardens campaign believed this will overwhelm the other monuments and make them fade away, perhaps. Perhaps this is because the memorial design was originally attended for memorial in Ottawa, in Canada, imported here without much alteration or, or taking into account the very different context. There are also legitimate concerns from the Save the Victoria Tower Gardens campaign that such extreme development will harm the park itself. And this has been clear from the very beginning of the project. And I would ask the Minister, and I see the Secretary of State has now left the Chamber, but I would therefore ask the Minister that is, to consider as part, as, as this bill progresses through this place and, and the other place, that consideration be given at re-looking at the current design of the memorial and the location of the Learning Centre. The design is far too large for this site, and particularly the size of this public park. It will dominate it. Even in response to the original public exhibition run by the UK Holocaust Memorial Foundation, a clear concern was that the excavation operations would cause significant harm to established trees and invite concerns over flooding. And I do remember during the planning process, the Environment Agency, as part of their uh, submission to the planning process, made it very, very clear they objected at the time because of flooding risk to this place. So I think, again, I think the Environment Agency may have changed their mind eventually, and I don't know why, um, but they were very clear at the time. Equally important is that the scale of development changes the feeling of the park considerably. It is not just a statue or a small monument. This is a large scale development which will, will need, as I said earlier, excavating two storeys underground for the learning centre. By its very design, it would lead to an increase in the number of visitors which would distort the functionality of Victoria Tower Gardens as a place of recreation. Mr Deputy Speaker, local people remain concerned that Victoria Tower Gardens will cease to be a neighbourhood park and will become a civic space dominated by the Holocaust Memorial and Learning Centre, as well as the associated infrastructure and security installations. In the meantime, the park will become a building site for many, many years, and this leads to a serious loss of amenity for local people, and meaning more congestion and noise pollution. And taken together with the restoration and renewal of the Palace of Westminster, this means residents will have the simultaneous repair of Victoria Tower, replacement of the Parliamentary Education Centre 
and the memorial construction. That will last for years. Of course. I'm, I'm grateful to my honourable friend giving way. She's making a really intelligent uh, speech and speaks with authority as, as the local member of parliament. But when she talks about the loss of the park, um, can we just be clear? Is she talking about the temporary disruption caused by the construction phase? Because my understanding is that the park will remain. It will still be there in perpetuity for local people, but there will be a modest reduction in size of the park as a result of the memorial being built. We're not talking about the permanent loss of the park, are we? Well, um, I, thank, I thank my uh, friend for his intervention, but I have to agree to disagree on this because this will change the actual nature of the current park. At the moment, it is a community neighbourhood park. It has a playground at one end, but then it has massive open space where local people, particularly children, can play, run around, take their dogs for a walk. And having the memorial, and particularly the size of the current design, will mean that it, ch it changes completely the, 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 uh, the atmosphere of the park. Um, of course. May I perhaps help her a little bit? Because the estimate by the London Historic Parks and the Gardens Trust is that something like 30 per cent, up to 30 per cent of the park will be lost. This is a major construction. But might I suggest to her, in addition to the excellent point she's making, that for some of us, it comes down to the essential principle of lack of consultation about the siting. There was public, the public were consulted. Westminster Council said no and the government has decided to override. That troubles us. As I've said before, it's not how we do things in this country, and perhaps that's the central yeah, point, point here. Yeah, I, yeah. I thank my, uh, the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention, and as I can, uh, uh, I, I can uh, remind the House that having been the leader of the Council when the planning application was going through, uh, we were very surprised at um, the lack of consultation in many parts of the uh, application. And uh, as I said, there were a thousand objections to the planning application within that process. Um, but I think the father of the house was absolutely right when he outlined the issues between 2015 and 2016. Of course. To my honourable friend, it's also worth, I think, remembering that when the government decided to take in the application and away from the Westminster City Council, they indicated they'd been asked to do that by the council. That was never true. And just as a comment on the intervention by our right honourable friend, while the Memorial Learning Centre, the basement box and the bronze fins would be constructed, up to two thirds of the park would be unusable to people. And I think the estimate that the government had put forward, whether directly or through their advisory body of the foundation, that only about seven or eight percent would be taken, no one else believes that. The, of the House for his intervention and um, I can uh, reassure him that I am not aware of any local authority who wants to have the, uh, the decisions on planning applications taken away from them at any time but particularly uh, in such a, 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 a major application that's going to really affect local people because of the loss of immunity they are going to feel um, from the loss of this park and I agree with him that uh, we, there should have been more consultation, and you know it's, it is going to change the makeup of this neighbourhood park. We may see it. Well, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Westminster resident, but many of uh, members in this place uh, come here for for the working week and go home, and they may use uh, Victoria Tower Gardens uh, to go and do a media interview, or go for a walk at lunchtime, or meet friends. I can tell this place that that park is a, a, a vital amenity for many local people, particularly those living in social housing who do not have the benefit of gardens in their homes. And to take away any amount of uh, space from that public park will, I think, will be a real shame. Mr Deputy Speaker, I appreciate that this is a hugely complex and emotional issue. However, concerns over the bill are not a NIMBY cause wishing to block or development. Rather, they are rooted in the reality that for local people, there is very little support for this memorial being placed in Victoria Tower Gardens on the grounds of loss of green space, increased visitor numbers, <coughs> environmental concerns, traffic and the effect of, on surrounding monuments. Rightly, there are very strong policies about building in parks and public green spaces. 
It is obviously important to remember the horrors of the Holocaust. Of course it is. And that the next generation and the generation after that and after that and those who come um, should never ever be forgot what happened in Europe in the 1930s and 1940s and subsequent genocides throughout uh, since then. But for many, especially those who live in crowded urban areas such as Westminster, our neighbourhood parks and gardens are vital to the quality of Westminster's residents' lives. And that is why for me, this is the right memorial, but in the wrong location. <laughs>